Uh, hello, let us look at chapter 13, review problems together. So first one is this. We have uh, two chords intersecting, and then they want us to find EC, which is right over here. So uh, we can set up the relationship as in 4 times 7 uh, is equal to 3 times x, which is, you know, product of the segments of the chords must be equal to each other when they're intersecting. So we get to realize that x must be equal to, yes, 28 over Three. All right, let's move on to the next question. Same deal here. So we're going to apply the same uh, uh, theorem here. So 2 times, or x times 2x is equal to 2 times 12. Then we get to realize that x squared must be equal to 12 by canceling out 2's on each side. Then we get to realize that x must be equal to 2 radical 3. Now, and I believe that was the uh, uh, value of x. Now, to find PR, PR is 3 times of that. So we get PR must be equal to 6 square root of 3. <coughs> now, let's move on to the next question here. They want us to find VZ, and then we're going to call this one as equal to X. Then in this case, we realized outer times whole, so that means 2 times 9, because 7 plus 2 becomes 9, must be equal to 3 times three, or X plus 3. Now, then on our left side, we get 18, and I'm not going to multiply 3 out, because we are about to divide by 3 on both sides here. Then X plus 3 must be equal to? 6, hence x is equal to 3, and that is the value of vz. All right, let's move on to the next question. So here we have, they want us to find the value of uh, bc and also cd as well. So let's call bc as x, and then uh, cd, I just drew the line together. So here we get uh, 6 squared, because tangent line segment squared is equal to outer, which is 2, times the whole thing, which is 2 plus x. Now when I expand it and then divide by 2, I realize that 18 is equal to 2 plus x. Hence, x is equal to 16. And that is the value of bc. How about cd? Uh, since we have a right triangle, as you can see right over here, so we'll be using uh, Pythagorean theorem here. We get 18. But 6 and 18, since numbers are rather large, uh, I'm going to divide both sides by 6. Uh, and then I'm going to be using the smaller triangle to calculate the value. And later, I'm going to multiply by 6 again. So then we end up getting 1 and 3. So that's the uh, similar triangle with a smaller dimension. And then y, which is a hypotenuse for the uh, smaller triangle, becomes square root of 10, because 9 plus 1. Now, then uh, our CD must be equal to, actually not, not 3 times 6, actually. Uh, we have to multiply by, uh, what do you call that, uh, 6. So we end up getting, it will be 6 square root of 10. Here, 6 square root of 10 would be our final answer. All right, let's move on to the next question. Find PS. So we call PS as X. Now once again, outer times whole. So we get 4 times 12 must be equal to X times X plus 2. So in this case, only thing that which we end up getting is a quadratic equation. So we are expanding it here. So putting everything onto one side, then 0 equals X squared plus 2x, and minus 48. Now, when we factor, we get x uh, plus 8, and x minus 6. Therefore, x value must be equal to negative 8 and 6. And of course, 6 will be the answer, because we cannot have negative dimensions here. So, there it goes. That's our answer for the uh, ps. Let's look at number 13. Uh, they're saying that uh, chord GH and IJ of circle O are perpendicular at M. 
So they gave us this relationship over here. So now let let us try to draw the picture for that one. G, H, and then we have two chords perpendicular. I, J, M is in the middle. Now, so they said G, M uh, is equal to 12. That portion is equal to 12. And M, H must be, two times of M, H must be G, M. That means M, H must be equal to 6. Because reverse, uh, we end up getting half of 12. And then... I am, 6 times of I am must be 12, then I am must be equal to 2. That means we should be able to figure out MJ, and hence getting GH. <coughs> so we get to realize this relationship, 12, 6, and then 2A. Then A must be equal to uh, 36. Now, uh, then knowing, using that 36, once again, the relationship is 12 and 36 is 1 to 3 relationship. So we know that 1, 3 and the radical 10 becomes our hypotenuse in place of C. So G, uh, GJ actually then must be equal to 12 times of that, which is 12 radical 10. Becomes our final answer. Alrighty. Let's look at number 14 here. Line M and N meet at P. Uh, circle O meets M and two points A and B. And N, uh, C and D. Now, the question is, why must P be outside of circle O? So uh, our first case is, let us assume that A and B are given here, and then M. That's circle uh, O over there. And what if we have two lines meeting up? Uh, Two lines are meeting up in this way. So then here we get C and D, and then uh, this one is P. So we get 3 and then 6, because P A is equal to 3, and then A B is equal to 9, so P B is equal to 6, and P C is equal to 4, while C D is uh, C D equals 5, uh, C D is equal to 5 rather, then we get 1 over here. So then we can set up this equation, but as you can see, they're not equal to each other. So that means P cannot be the point inside of the circle. Now, what if we have uh, N and M meeting outside of the circle? So then let me try to erase this portion. Alright, so that becomes P and then C and D in this manner. <coughs> PA is equal to 3, and AB is equal to 9, and PC is equal to 4, and 5 given T in this manner. So we get to realize the outer time whole, which is uh, 3 times 12 must be equal to 4 times whole, which is 9. Then both of them is equal to 36. That means this case actually works, so which allows us to say that P must be outside of the circle instead of inside. All right, uh, let's look at the next question. So Earth is roughly 800, uh, 8,000 miles in diameter, and then riding a hot air balloon one mile above the surface, approximately how far? So basically we are looking for the tangent and then secant, issue, uh, secant uh, problem here. So then if you have to uh, set up diagram in this way, inside is 8,000 diameter and a small portion over here outside is one and then let's call that uh, the distance that they can uh, see and horizon let's call that as X tangent line segment then we can set up 1 times 8001 is equal to X square so then here to figure out the value of X we just have to take the square root of it then X is around uh, that's right, 89.44, so uh, uh, <coughs> around 89 miles. That becomes our answer for the first one. So uh, notice the sec uh, same kind of uh, uh, case will be applied for the next question as well. So here we have uh, 
six miles above. So that means what we end up getting is 8,000 is in the middle. And then, uh, that's right, six is the uh, outer line segment. Then what we end up getting is x squared must be equal to six times 8,006. Now to figure out the value of x, it's about uh, 219 miles. So that becomes the distance of the uh, distance in horizon that they can see. Now spaceship with 100 miles above. Then uh, same uh, case applies here, except the different numbers. Then x must be equal to square root of 100 times 8100, which is the whole line segment. Then that becomes about 900. Oh, that's equal to 900 miles exactly. Alrighty, so let's continue to uh, move on to the next question. So we realize that uh, ZW is greater than ZY, and we need to show that ZV is uh, less than ZX. So right now we know that ZY times ZX uh, must be equal to ZW times ZV. Now, that's basically outer times whole equals outer times whole. But at this point, we get to realize that let us try to replace ZY with ZW, which is greater value. Then uh, ZW times ZX has to be greater than our previous value right over here. Because ZW is greater than ZY. So therefore, it has to be equal to ZW times ZV as well because these two are equal to each other while this one is greater than this one so therefore this one has to be greater than that one as well alright now cancelling out ZW by, div uh, by division then we get to see that ZX is in fact greater than ZV and that's how we can prove it alright how about uh, number 17 so we have two circles given in this way. We need to show that PQ is in fact equal to PR. So now, first we can see that PQ square, because PQ is tangent. And then uh, has to be equal to PB times PA. And this comes from the uh, circle that I'm highlighting right now. And that's the tangent, and that's a secant. Now, but let us try to look at it from the uh, second uh, circle perspective, one on the bottom, right over here. And then uh, PA is a secant once again, and PR is tangent. But this portion, we already wrote them uh, on this previous equation. So we can say that that must be equal to PR squared. Then we can conclude that PQ squared must be equal to PR squared. Therefore, PQ must be equal to P. R. Alrighty, let's look at the next question. So is it possible for chord A, B, and C, D of a circle intersect at X? So they have to intersect in the middle somewhere. Uh, such that X is the middle, a uh, midpoint of A, B, but closer to C than uh, to D. So we can uh, have the picture in this way. Uh, these are AA because line segment AB has been called AB has been bisected and the other one can be uh, in this way so if, if I were to have it uh, in this way we, we get we get to write up an equation a square must be equal to R minus X and R plus X and that would have been the uh, formula now which you can rewrite that as R square minus x squared, because x is smaller than r, so when you uh, find the difference of square, it must be positive of some number that's square of a, so that should be a work, that should, that should work out uh, fine. If I were to give you one example, uh, I can use 6 and 6. We know that that multiplies to uh, 36. So what if we have a smaller line segment happen to be 3? We could have picked 2, we could have picked 3, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what if I decided to pick 3? 
then the entire line segment must be, uh, the other portion would have been 12, that multiplies to 36 as well. So this is one such case, it, work. it works. All right, let's move on to the next question. Number 19, is it possible now to call A, B, and C, D uh, of a circle meet at point X? Now similar, uh, X is the midpoint of A, B, but not necessarily the case for C, D. Now, given that A, B, and C, D are equal to each other, so we are looking at uh, a case that looks like this way. Now, let us say, uh, to set up a ratio, A, X, and then because, because we have X in the middle here. So A, X, and B, X is equal to each other, so we call them as A, A. And the other one is B, N, 2, B. Now, notice that then in our case here, we have a uh, ratio, I mean, we have a uh, line segment divided into two pieces, and here, three pieces. So we, what if I were to use a number uh, six, which can be divisible by two and three as well? Then what we get to realize here is this. I can rewrite them as three and three and two and four. So this will satisfy the condition that was given right over here. Then we get three times three, must be equal to 2 times 4. And you know that that's not going to work. So the answer is it's not possible to have two cores intersecting in this manner. All right, let's move on to the next question. Uh, find the ratio of AC to AD. So we realize that AC is equal to CB. Let's call that as A and A. How about AD is equal to DE, which is equal to EF. So let's call that as B. B, B. Then we can set up an uh, equation in this manner. A times 2A, out of times whole, must be equal to B times 3B, which is out of times whole. Then we get to realize that 2A squared must be equal to 3B squared, where A is uh, AC and then AD is B. To find the ratio, I'm going to have A squared over B squared must be equal to 3 over 2. Now, take the square root of both sides, then we get to realize square root of 3 over 2. If you want to rationalize the denominator, it would have been square root of 6 over 2. That becomes our answer. All right, number 21. So point A is on circle O, and PA is tangent to the circle, and point B. Now, but they are equal to each other, and then we, are, we have to show that PB must be tangent. So, uh... That's A, that's B. What if B is not tangent? So then it would have been it, ha it has to be secant. So then, uh, is it possible for uh, PB line PB would be a secant? So if I call this one as B, and then I'm going to call this one as B prime, in a way that uh, PB prime is less than PB. So then we have to realize that the uh, relationship between PA is equal to PA square is equal to PB prime times PB. But notice that PB is greater than PB prime. Then if I were to substitute PB uh, in place of PB prime, so we get PB, PB square must be greater than PA square because this is greater than this one. But that violates the given condition. PB has to be equal to PA. So therefore, this one cannot happen. So this this is not possible. Now, what if, so on other cases, what if we have uh, B is the, B is closer than uh, B prime? That could have been second case. So our second case here is that PB uh, prime is greater than PB. Now, we're going to apply the same uh, relationship here, PA square. Now, Notice that PB is smaller, uh, PB is less than uh, PB prime, then we get PA square has to be greater than PB square. And once again, that's not possible based upon uh, PB being equal to PA. So therefore, only way, only way that's possible is not to have secant, that means we got to have um, tangent. All right, next question, number 22. So P is the point... Uh, in the same circle, on the same plane, as a circle centered O. 
Now C can through P intersects a uh, circle at point AB. Now, so first we have to prove that PA times PB must be equal to PO squared minus R squared. That's P, that's O, A and B given in this way. Now then, uh, OA is radius. So let's try to describe PA and PB in terms of PO and R. So we get PA is equal to PO, which is that much line segment, minus R. And PB becomes PO plus R. So when we multiply them together, PA times PB, then we get the uh, difference of squares. So we get PO squared minus R squared. That's what we end up getting. How about second case? Second case states that what if P is inside of the circle? Then we get to see a picture that looks like this. Now, what is PA? So we realize that that's equal to R over here. So PA is in fact equal to R minus PO. How about PB? Must be R plus PO. Then we're going to multiply them one more time, PA times PB. By the difference of squares, we will be end up getting R squared minus PO squared. Very similar to the previous one, but the order has been changed. Alrighty. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, so we want to show the uh, Pythagorean theorem using the uh, uh, circle relationships. So we'll let us assume that uh, AX is equal to A, and the radius is equal to B, and then uh, XO is equal to C. Then we get to see that uh, XB, which is outer line segment of the C, can must be C minus B because we realize that this one is B as well, so C minus B. Uh, but we will use the uh, circle relationship to write up an equation. So we get A squared, tangent squared is equal to outer, which is C minus B, times the whole secant line segment, which is C plus B. We get to see the uh, difference of squares here. A squared is equal to C squared minus B squared. But by adding B squared to both sides, there equals our Pythagorean theorem. Alrighty, so that was chapter 13, and I'll see you later.